Okay, so today I'm going to try to convey and show you the welting process that we use at Ethos when we're building our handmade or our specifically our Z boots. This is a very unique method. It's a method again that it's very different as far as what you're used to seeing from regular boot makers or shoemakers. It's still a good year welt. The only difference is, is that we're using a pre-cut welt instead of a long strip that you normally would go around all the way a square toe or a pointed toe or even a round toe. This is so different because the reason I use the pre-cut is because I like to have a lot of welt on left over when I put the soles on so I can get a shape. We're really trying to get a shape, a fashion look. Uh, ethos is we're building our z-boots around a, a certain look so that gives us plenty of welt to work with it's again quite a bit different than welting your normal cowboy boot or your shoe but hopefully we can get across to you today that it's not necessarily difficult it's certainly uh, a very unique way of welting I believe it's easier and so uh, I'm gonna attempt to show you that now so here we go so this is a pre-cut welt pattern that we're actually scribing onto a horse butt. You might wonder what a horse butt is, but it's a basically the, the piece that uh, Horween has left over after they cut Shell Cordovan for their, that's one of their mainstays is Shell Cordovan for shoe, the shoe industry. And they make cordovan shoes out of that piece of the horse hide and this is the leftover that is actually veg tanned you see it's it's not really thick it's got some it's got a really good body to it this is a hard rolled russet uh, horse butt and it makes really really great welt of course it's horse hide so that's what we're going to use for our pre-cut welt now we're going to take this uh this gauged basically it's a channel cutter and it's gauged to where you can slide it to whatever width you want to cut basically we're just using the inside part of the welt as our gauge and then we take it in about an eighth of an inch which is like your normal welt so we'll groove that to about half the thickness of this horse butt and that makes for, first of all, it makes for uh, a good relief for the welt stitches to lay in so they're not exposed. Also makes the welting uh, or the flattening of the, the welt a little easier. It makes it a little more workable. Um, and then the last thing we'll do is we will edge the inside, top side of that, with a number two, basic number two V edger. And that also helps it to lay in there a little better and so it helps to relieve or to hide those welt stitches and basically there is your hand cut pre-cut welt okay so here is the pre-cut welt it's been dyed and it is wet we like to wet it because again it makes it easier to form and you can see there's no accidents here we actually cut it to the shape of the last after the boot was lasted so you really can't do it with a regular last by itself you need to wait till you get the actual material 
around it so you can have the full breadth of what you're going to be welting. And then the only trick that's different here is we have to start in the middle. And the reason you have to start in the middle is because if you didn't and you started normally at the end, by the time you got to the middle, your the, the tip or your shape may be all the way over here to the side. So trust me, you cannot skirt that. You have to start in the middle and go down one side and then down the other. And so basically we make a middle hole at the very toe tip and then start the welting. Not very difficult. So again, just going down one side, careful to keep it in shape. And you can see, or I hope you can see, that we've marked our holes. Why do you do that? Well, for reasons just like now, you want to be able to see those boogers when you're in tight quarters. And right now we're in tight quarters. As you can see, it's even difficult to get the welt cord down onto the awl because it's so tight. Got it? That's why a heel pry comes in real handy. So we got our first knot going here. Try to make sure it stays in the channel. As good as possible. Now, on to the next hole. Sometimes the hardest part is getting that thread onto the awl. Using waxed in threads and hog bristles or monofilament, whatever you're using to, to do that. I dare you, first of all, to make a wax in that's stronger than this braided polyester or nylon. This stuff is very, very stout. And this diameter is every bit as wide as a uh, wax tin. So, I believe it's far superior. In fact, we did a test, I'll show you. A, a strength test. And you'd be amazed at how easy the waxed in thread broke.
you see one side of these loose threads or the ending threads I'm going to leave for when we lace in the shank. So we're going to pull those out of the way and then what we're going to do, we're going to sky these like so. It's always best to have a sharp instrument. So I use a French edger to come along here and kind of basically just cut out the excess vamp material and lining and even some welt. And you might say, well, you don't have to do that. You know, you're right. I don't have to do that, but I like to for two reasons. First of all, it gives me a cleaner look as I work. Like I said, I like to make each step clean so the next step is just as clean or has a chance to be just as clean. And when I say clean, I just mean thorough and right. So you see this is doing a nice job and it allows me to have a steady hand because these French edgers have guides on them or guards on them. And then the last thing we do is we're going to lay down this channel. Which allows us to cover up, covering up those welt stitches. Anyway, this is the, uh, the way we do our pre-cut welt for our z-boots and the reason again the only reason we would do this is for a pointed toe usually uh, or a pointed box toe like this so we can have plenty of welt to work with to shape our soles and again that's just part of the fashion thing that we do here at ethos we like for it to uh, to have our look so it's part of branding for us so I hope that this has shown you a little bit about how we welt in the process of inseaming our boots with a pre-cut welt. Lastly, I hope that if you like this video, you're entertained by it or you find it useful and instructional for you and your shop, or if it's just you alone, if you find this uh, instructional to you and helpful, I would ask that you just subscribe to our YouTube channel and leave a comment and leave a thumbs up for us. We uh, certainly are trying to leave our mark and the way we do that is through marketing and the tools like YouTube. So if you would help us out and do that and we will uh, we'll be putting up a lot of new videos coming up and we hope that you tune in. See you later.